I V M. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people, and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey, where you can fill out the survey. The year is 1964. The place is Uttar Pradesh. Keshav Singh writes an article criticizing a sitting MLA. Pretty routine, I would say. But the UP speaker issues an arrest warrant and Keshav Singh is sent to prison for seven days. What is going on? Can the fundamental right to expression be subordinated by legislative privileges? Hello and welcome to The Longest Constitution. My name is Priya Mirza and every week we look into how the Constitution shapes our lives. And in each episode, we unravel a few stories to get a better sense of constitutional politics. And this season is about work, where we look at all sorts of work, from manual scavengers to the Prime Minister. Oh, the present one, he's on the show today, sort of. And through these stories, we examine what we can get away with and what we can't get away with. And in the last episode, we saw that Jaya Bachchan could not get away from being disqualified for holding an office of profit. And she was disqualified as a member of the Rajya Sabha on account of her appointment as the chairperson of the UP Film Council. Khair, aage barte. Aaj hum nazar dalenge... माननीय प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी पे जब वो गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री थे पर उससे पहले थोड़ा सा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन पर गौर भी करेंगे वी आर ऑल्सो एक्सप्लोरिंग द फंडामेंटल राइट टू एक्सप्रेशन दैट्स आर्टिकल 19 व्हिच इज अ रियली ब्रॉड आर्टिकल व्हिच ग्रांट्स सेवरल राइट्स फ्रॉम द राइट टू लाइवलीहुड टू द फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन टू द राइट टू मूवमेंट सो या आवर फर्स्ट स्टोरी इज इन गुजरात द ईयर इज 2010 एंड द देन चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ गुजरात Narendra Modi and his team have a brilliant idea which is let's make voting mandatory in local bodies elections that's panchayat and municipal elections now we've seen how ironically the qualifications at the panchayat and municipal level are higher in a few states So in Chhattisgarh having a bathroom at home is a qualification while in Maharashtra a candidate for a local election cannot have more than two children amongst other things and that is a disservice to the idea of empowering local bodies and not only because these legislative assemblies have imposed all sorts of barriers to be elected as a local representative while they themselves are not subjected to the same level of scrutiny not fair guys but gujarat gujarat went one step ahead under this law framed by the gujarat legislative assembly those who did not vote would be penalized it allowed the state election commission to declare an absent voter as defaulter eeps voting as compulsory what an idea surgy so the bill was passed in 2011 and was sent for the governor's nod but the sensible governor rightly pointed out that voting compulsorily is a violation of the fundamental right to expression where if there is no choice then it cannot be freedom and that's what the checks and balances are in our constitutional structures of governance but what did the gujarat legislative assembly do rather than pay attention to the objection of the governor they just waited for a more compliant governor to take position yeah just frighten people that's what the gujarat model is we will intimidate people by passing scary and unconstitutional laws tried and tested in gujarat and now unleashed on the rest of the country now let's get back to up where under article 194 of the constitution legislative assemblies privileges lie in controlling publications and under that privilege keshav singh was packed off to jail crazy but wait it gets crazier keshav singh's lawyer approached the lucknow bench of the allahabad high court through a writ of habeas corpus to order his release a two judge bench heard the matter and directed that he be released however the up legislative assembly just scoffed ha judges ki himmat ke hamare ilake mein tangadayenge the up assembly was not to be outdone 
so they issued a fresh notice of breach of privileges to the two judges keshav singh and his lawyer again for breach of privilege oof so finally keshav singh and his lawyers approached the allahabad bench where the matter was heard by 28 judges whoa now this was a pressing grave matter and if the precedent was established that speakers of assemblies could go around issuing arrest warrants for lawyers and judges that would hugely threaten the balance of power and that's why the situation was considered grave enough for the union government to seek an advisory opinion from the supreme court under article 143 part 1 all of this by the way falls under the category of legislative practices and procedures so sexy that's what turns academics on and not not other stuff okay our third story today is also about the skewed nature of local governance about the fifth schedule and the constitutional provision and assurance to scheduled tribes to their land so scheduled tribes like other bureaucratic terms like obcs or scheduled caste is not a felt or lived identity nobody wakes up feeling like a scheduled tribe and within that uninspiring term there are a rich set of diverse and ignored people for example the chenchus of andhra pradesh who lived by hunting with their bows and arrows gathered wild fruits and dig for edible roots and according to anthropologists may well be the most archaic human stratum of south asia wow now these guys are the original ecologically sustainable people without shopping at nicobar and yet their forests their homes are threatened by private mining projects stainless steel and cement plants wildlife sanctuaries hydropower projects factories and tourism projects because their homes are also homes to bauxite calcite coal iron ore manganese teak and other priceless forest produce so the panchayat extension to schedule areas act 1996 pisa grants powers for natural resource management and self government to tribal communities that's great but in 1993 that's much before the act samatha an ngo founded by the state that's andhra pradesh government was happily giving mining leases over acres and acres of rich forest and green lands to non tribals so this ngo filed a petition in the court challenging the use of tribal land by non tribals so what happened in gujarat jahan vote dalna anivarya banaya gaya the high court came to its rescue following a pil filed by a lawyer in the gujarat high court acting chief justice jayant patel and justice jb pardiwala admitted the petition and then put a stay on the implementation of mandatory voting in municipal and panchayat polls shukra that this odious undemocratic unconstitutional law was dust binned meanwhile in samtha versus state of andhra pradesh 1997 the supreme court admitted that while there is no prohibition on the transfer of land itself the produce of these lands are for the tribals and that even if these areas are mined the produce must be shared with the tribals and this was a landmark judgment by the way meanwhile in the keshav singh case the supreme court of india held that the powers privileges and immunities of legislative bodies in india were not absolute and that they cannot be greater than the power of the courts putting a firm end to the contest between the legislature and the judiciary so today's takeaway is that the first local governance in india is crippled by unfair regulations over local representatives and at least in the case of gujarat one of these was struck down the second The Keshav Singh case demonstrates how dangerous the absence of the codification of the privileges of legislators could be and why the judiciary needed to step in to close the matter. And lastly, the biggest fight is over land. Over decades, the constitutional rights of the tribals over their land has been nibbled away by our very own Indian state. 
Tribal people constitute 55% of the total displaced population in India without a legal ownership to the land they inhabit and that leaves them with very few options. I hope you like this show. If you have questions or comments, please send them in on Twitter where I tweet at fundamentally p or on Instagram the longest constitution. Until next time, this is me Priya Mirza signing out. Hey, it's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Advertising is Dead, Piyush Gupta, president of Keystone, talks to Varun about how his experimental marketing agency is helping brands get on the metaverse. On Voices for Water, Karthik is joined by Dr. Anju Gaur, senior water resource management specialist. Together, they navigate the landscape of Indian water data. On Pulia Bazi, Pranay and Saurabh dig into why exactly the taxes on petrol are so high. On Ek Juski Finance, Priyanka tells us how we can avoid taking a financial risk. And on Marathi Kirkitun, the Deshmukhs explore the beauty of the Dev Nagari font on the occasion of Akshaya Tritiya. Do follow us on social media where IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're following this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Word of mouth is one of our biggest, biggest, most helpful things you can do for us. We'd really appreciate that. And also, don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening on. And you can also check us out on YouTube. Go check out ibmpodcast.com slash YouTube. you get a list of all of our YouTube channels there. We're also doing a small listener survey to better understand how you respond to our shows and the advertising on the network. We would really appreciate it if you could spare a few minutes to fill it out. It's at ibmpodcast.com slash survey. This really helps us build better shows for you. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors for this week, SBI Life Insurance, India Water Portal, and Jupiter, a digital banking app. Have you ever wondered where the business world is headed? How the ways in which we create, market, and sell to consumers will evolve? Or if we'll ever go back to wearing pants while working? For answers to all of this and more, tune into Advertising is Dead with me, Varun Dugirala. Every Tuesday, as I talk to entrepreneurs, leaders, and change makers from across business, media, marketing, and beyond, you can catch all episodes of Advertising is Dead on the IBM Podcast website, app, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Listen.